Hello, this is Pastor Aaron at Alma Alliance Church, and we are here uh, together to share the fourth of seven reflections on the seven last words of Christ as he was dying on the cross at Calvary. And we are sharing these reflections uh, with the prayer that they will help to uh, prepare our hearts to celebrate Easter this coming Sunday, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and all that in, that entails uh, for us. But of course, there can be no resurrection without there first being a crucifixion. And so these seven reflections uh, are designed to help us to understand and enter into the reality of, of the crucifixion, of what it, what it meant for Jesus and ultimately what it means for us. You know, these days we have some sense of what it uh, means to be uh, socially isolated from one another. I'm, I'm here today as we have been many Sundays uh, in an empty church, a church that is not filled with people as it normally uh, would be. Uh, we have been practicing this social distance. We have been sheltering in place. And, and part of what that has done is that it has separated us uh, from those who we love, at least in terms of physical space. We, we cannot go visit people in their homes. We cannot uh, get together uh, for dinner in restaurants. We cannot have a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Those normal things that we would do to interact with one another and, and to have fellowship with one another are things that we, we cannot uh, do uh, much these days. I think especially uh, with a broken heart of those who are in hospitals right now with prolonged illnesses who have to go long lengths of time without uh, visitors other than the, the, the noble uh, doctors and nurses who, who take care of them but otherwise cannot see uh, their family, their children, even their, their spouses because of this virus and the risks that it entails to people. It makes me think of uh, those who uh, have spouses who are in the armed services in the military who have to serve for prolonged periods of time, month, month after month, sometimes a year or more, being separated from their families and from their spouses and how, how isolating and lonely of an existence that is to not be able to have physical contact and regular interaction uh, with the people whom you whom you love the most and have had a uh, relationship with over uh, often decades of time, often whole lifetimes. We are not made for this. We are, we are made to be in relationship with one another. We are made to share fellowship, to, to have community with the people around us. We are not made to be alone. We are not made for isolation. It has been wired into us by the, the creative hand of God to be in relationship with other people. In Genesis chapter 1, it tells the story of the, the creation of humanity. And, and in uh, that passage, God gets to the pinnacle of his creation, the creation of man and woman. And he says of man and woman, let us make them in our image, man and woman made in the image of God. And I think part of the secret of unpacking what it means to be made in the image of God is that when God speaks those words over, over humanity, he refers to himself in the plural. Let us make mankind in our image. This reality that God himself exists in an eternal relationship of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, sharing a, a divine love from eternity past to eternity future, that they have always existed in a perfect community of these, of these three persons living in, in harmony and peace and mutual love for one another. And that, that something of God is wired into us as those who have been made in his image and that we are designed for relationship. We are designed for a relationship vertically with God and horizontally with people. Behind me, you see an illuminated cross. 
It is illuminated because it is an empty cross. It signifies the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that, that, that he is no longer dead, he is alive. But the reality is that there was a time when, when that cross would have been very dark indeed. The Gospel of Matthew says this of that moment of darkness of the crucifixion. Jesus has been nailed to the cross. And here's what Matthew has to say. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The scriptures tell us that in that moment when Christ was placed on the cross, he was there as a perfect sacrifice for the sin of all the world. Though he had never sinned, though he had walked in spotless fellowship with God his Father in the power of the Holy Spirit, That he took our place on the cross in order to provide a sacrifice for sin. And in doing so, the entirety of the weight of the sin of all the world, eternity past to to the future, from from the dawn of time till its end, every human being who has ever walked the face of the planet, every every deed that has been done, that has been in betrayal of a relationship with God by every person in all time, was laid upon Jesus Christ on the cross. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians that he became sin. Who knew no sin. So much was the weight and the stain of the sin of all humanity that was placed on Christ that he didn't just bear our sin, he became our sin. And as Jesus became our sin, the wall of separation was built up between him and the Father. And God's righteous wrath against sin was poured out upon him. And for that moment in time, that perfect, eternal, loving relationship between the Father and the Son was broken. And we can theologize about what that means for a a theology of the Trinity whether or not God could truly forsake the Son. But the reality is, in that moment, bearing the weight of the sin of all humanity, Jesus felt the loneliness, the separation, the isolation that was caused by that weight from his Father. And he cried out, Why, Father? Have you forsaken me? I want to consider that that question that Jesus asked was not merely a cry, uh, what is often called the cry of dereliction, the cry of abandonment, although it is certainly no less than that. (laughs) That it is more than just a rhetorical question, that it is a question that demands an answer. And indeed, I want to I want to I want to just think about the possibility that it is a question that that not only demands an answer, but that Christ intentionally uttered in order to point to an answer to that question. Why was Jesus Christ forsaken by God the Father on the cross? 
And the answer is found in that same verse from 2 Corinthians. He became sin, who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. See, Christ gave himself on the cross, not just to give us a blank slate of of wiping away our sin, but to restore us to a right relationship with God uh, so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our mistakes. He doesn't see our faults. He doesn't see our failures. He sees the spotless righteousness of his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. That in the cross, Jesus Christ took our sin so that we could be clothed in his righteousness. That he took our place so that we could stand in his place in perfect loving relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he invited us to the table of fellowship with the triune God so that we, by faith in him, can have a place in the kingdom of heaven just as he does. So in a sense, that cry of Jesus Christ on the cross gives us some comfort because we know that we have a Savior who is acquainted with what it's like to feel alone, to feel isolated, to feel cut off, to feel abandoned even by God. But we also have a Savior who has atoned for our sin so that we can be forgiven and so that we can be restored to a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. And I pray as we hear that cry that we may also remember that it is a cry that has an answer. It is a call that has a response. And that response is our salvation. In the description of the video down below, you will see a a link uh, to uh, another YouTube video that is a worship response uh, that I invite you to uh, click on that link, uh, listen to that song, and uh, reflect on what it means to you to know that that Christ was forsaken so that you might be forgiven. (laughs) There will also be some questions for reflections uh, in, in those uh, comments as well. And I encourage you to use those for your own personal devotion time or to use them as part of a small group discussion with your family, with your friends, uh, maybe even uh, online in, in Facebook or in the YouTube comments uh, that, that we might share some form of fellowship uh, by talking about these things uh, with one another. Thank you very much.